Welcome back. We're going to talk about the Metro Division today. See? Isn't that fun? Uh, and I, I had almost forgotten to update Columbus from last night because I did this board up yesterday. Uh, now, again, I just want to get into the overview. I want to get into unrestricted and restricted free agents. Anybody with term, I'm not going to discuss in this video because that's when you get into crazy talk. And I try my best to steer clear unless it's one of those Batman was behind it all kind of videos. And there's likely one coming soon because it's been building for a while. There's one in there. Uh, I try not to do comedy videos unless I have an actual reason to do them. So that's why I don't do not do them regularly. Because I'll see people saying, you should do another one of those. Well, only when it... Only when I feel inspired to do it, because otherwise it's just going to be, it's not going to work. All right, Carolina. We'll look at Carolina first. They're 29, 18, and 3. They have 61 points. They're 5, 4, and 1 in their last 10. Or no, they're 5, 4, and 1 in, in January. So what I did was I put up their record during the month of January on the board. So, and I guess it's over their last 10 because it's 10 games. <laughs> Anyways, uh, their UFA list is interesting. Now... According to reports, Eric Halla may be on, a, on his way out the door. They may not want to keep him around. I don't know. But Halla, who's had injury problems as well, and Vegas fans are going, yeah, we know. Uh, he may very well be an interesting piece for them to put out there considering Dougie Hamilton's injury, right? You can take Halla, who missed a lot of games, and you can probably turn him into a defenseman, right? So it'll be interesting to see if he does get moved. Uh, Justin Williams is a UFA at the end of the year. He's not going anywhere. Uh, Edmondson, they love Edmondson. I would say I would think that an extension gets signed with him soon. Trevor Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk, on the other hand, I would think that with the emergence of Hayden Fleury and with the with the fact that Jake Bean is the best defenseman in the American Hockey League right now, that's debatable, I know, but Jake Bean uh, was given best defenseman at this point by by I'm trying to think if it was hockey news. I'm trying to I saw it. So yes, Jake Bean is on his way. And I would think for a guy like Van Riemsdyk, that probably means he's on his way to town. Now, whether or not they make a move at the deadline, that remains to be seen. Uh, RFAs, they got Warren Fogel. They like Fogel. I don't think he gets a large raise, but he'll probably get one. And they'll keep him. Uh, Walmart isn't going anywhere either. And Hayden Fleury's on the list as an RFA. And the bonus for Carolina is none of these guys are going to get a huge raise. So there shouldn't be any cap problems going forward. And you've got probably Jake Bean, I would think, going into the lineup next year. We've been waiting on Jake for a while, haven't we? All right, so Carolina, I think, is in pretty good shape. I don't expect a ton out of them at the deadline, but if, if Howell's not going to work, if they're not going to extend him, they may very well send him out as a rental at the deadline so they can get back a defenseman. Maybe L.A., right? Martinez? Again, this is just me going, I don't know, maybe. It's not a prediction. I don't do that. Um, Columbus, they're 27 uh, 16 and 8. They currently have 62 points. So that was 60. And I changed that to 62. And in the month of January, they're 9 and 2. So anybody who doesn't believe in Columbus, I don't know what more to tell you. Their only UFA is Gerby. I would hope they'd hold on to Gerby. That being said, when everybody's healthy, Gerby is likely not going to be in the top 12 forwards. Uh, RFAs, you've got Pierre Luc Dubois who will get some money. I'll be interested to see what Dubois gets. Dubois has been arguably their best consistent forward, right? Atkinson's likely their best goal scorer. Uh, I think Bjorkstrand, though, is making an argument in his favor that way. I'll be interested to see what they give Dubois and what they decide his value is. I would think you don't want to overvalue him, but he's been pretty pretty decent forward for them, and you don't want to give him an offer either that insults him. He is one of the few kind of big names among RFAs. I mean, it's not like last year's RFAs were was just insane all, all July and August, but he's a relatively big name. Eric Robinson uh, is RFA. Sonny Milano, Gavrikov is an RFA. Corpus Allo and Merzlikens are both fascinatingly RFAs. Whatever happens with Yarmo Kekalainen and the Blue Jackets from here, uh, it could very well be tied to how much he gives Corpus Allo and Merzlikens. Because you have to ask yourself, okay, so is, is this a matter of both goalies playing really well and they're both NHL level and we need to pay them as such? Or is it our system that's making them look better than what they might be? And this is where you get into that Islanders question as well. Of, of does the system make the goaltender look better or are the goaltenders just thriving? So in Columbus, are the goaltenders thriving? Do you pay Corpus Allo six or seven million? Do you pay Merz Leakins a couple million based on how he's playing right now? Or 
do you try to get them a, a reasonable, maybe a bridge deal? It's going to be interesting to see what they do with them. New Jersey. New Jersey's 17, 24 and 7 overall. They have 41 points. They're 3, 5 and 1 this month. So they haven't made things easier on themselves for the most part in the month of January. But don't take them too lightly because they can still beat you. Uh, the 2020 UFA list, Simmons. Now I know Simmons has come out and said he doesn't want to be traded. He's not asking to be traded. But he doesn't have a no trade clause that I know of. So Simmons, right? I don't think Simmons is necessarily going. But if Simmons is going to stay, I would think maybe they sit down and talk an extension with him. Otherwise, you should look at moving him. He's, he's a big player. Uh, the offense, while it's not what it was a few years ago, it's still there. There He can still provide something for you, uh, likely on the third line. And I would think he'd have some value. You'd be crazy if you're New Jersey not to look at bringing in a couple of assets if you can. Uh, Rooney doesn't really stand out as a guy who's going to bring you back a whole lot. Uh, Andy Green is, is an interesting one. He's played a ton of games as a member of the New Jersey Devils. Do you perhaps look at trading him? Just look at renting him out at the deadline. He's a he's an experienced defenseman who can play top four minutes. It, it's an interesting topic because there's a team in Toronto that might be looking for a defenseman, and maybe Green would be somebody that they could pick up. And again, it's a rental, so for Toronto, that'd leave fans pulling their hair out again. Uh, Votnin is also a fascinating case of is it better to sign Votnin and keep him long term? Or is it better to to put him on the market, see what you might be able to get back for him? Because again, you have to weigh the benefits of keeping Sammy Votnin, who would be hard to replace, over trading him out and seeing what you can get back and seeing if the pieces you get back are better than what you get in keeping him. Like what Colorado did with Matt Duchesne. That was wizardry, that was. Uh, and Louis Domingue is a UFA this coming summer. I know he doesn't have any kind of a, a value at this stage on the market, but you never know what can happen. Keith Kincaid got moved at the, the deadline last year. Uh, restricted free agents, Brat should get paid some money. He won't get paid as much as he would if he got played as much as he should. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, my point being, I, I don't think Jesper Brat has had the kind of ice time that I think he should get. And we'll see whether or not he moves up the lineup next year, but it does make it easier for them to negotiate with him. His agent may come in and say, look at these numbers. He would have scored more if he was on the top two lines. And they go, yeah, he would have, but he didn't. So here's what we're offering. Mackenzie Blackwood's RFA this summer as well. I would think Blackwood will get a, a solid bump in his money. He's played well. And for all of the criticism of New Jersey goaltenders, I, I don't think Blackwood's going to get any of that. Uh, Demang, yes. Schneider, it's understandable. Blackwood, I don't think so. Uh, Mackenzie Blackwood has performed very well for the most part. And some games, his save percentage is kind of low. And I, having watched the game, I'll go, eh, it really wasn't on him. That was the defense in front of him. So it'll be interesting to see what New Jersey does because they have a lot of pieces here that need to be renewed or that they may need to move on from. And it's tough, too, because do they have a permanent GM in, in their midst? Or are we looking at Fitzgerald might make some moves and then he's replaced this summer? It's always awkward for me when a team does that. I always find that weird. It's sort of like, I don't trust you to own my car, but here's the keys running around the block for a while. And then if it crashes, what do you do? So if, if these these guys get moved and it's not like, do you need do you need the permission of somebody higher up? Or does Fitzgerald work with autonomy? It'll be interesting to see what they do. Uh, New York Islanders, they're 29, 15, and 5. 63 points overall, so they're one point ahead of Columbus. Suddenly, their hold on third looks uh, tenuous. They're 4, 5, and 2 in the month of January. So it's been a rough month for them, uh, winning 4 out of 11. And again, people get all caught up in where they are in the overall standings. Look at the points totals. These, these teams are not that far apart. There's not that much separating 5th from, say, 14th or 15th. There really isn't. So your 2020 UFAs for the Islanders, uh, Matt Martin, you got to keep Matt Martin. And I would think Martin would take a, a, a team-friendly deal to stay with the Islanders. It's it's a marriage that works. Uh, Broussard, Broussard's had some, some decent streaks. Uh, I don't recall writing his name on the board for goals and assists recently. Not a lot anyways. And so maybe Broussard ends up being moved on from to help somewhere else in the lineup. Maybe not. Could, though. Uh, Kuhn Hackle, I can't see him going anywhere. Uh, Thomas Grice, there's a case to be made for Thomas Grice being their starter and holding on to him. And I would think that 
maybe Lou sits down and talks extension with him sooner rather than later. You don't want that that hanging out there. The thing is, Grace, how much money do you give him? Is there a goaltender right now in the AHL that you can look at and say, all right, we can take him, put him on the Islanders, and save the money we would give Grace? It's a decision they made last year kind of sort of with Leonard where they went up going with Samsonov. Although when you look at the contract Samsonov was given and compare with what Leonard was given by Chicago, uh, anyways, uh, it was an odd move at the time and it still looks odd in hindsight. They're restricted free agents. This is where you get your big name. Matthew Barzell, restricted free agent. This is where if you're an Islanders fan and you're like, we're benching Barzell, this is where I can kind of understand like a little bit of panic because he is a restricted free agent this summer. Not only that, but Pollock is a restricted free agent this summer. Both of those guys deserve healthy raises. Pollock is a defenseman who doesn't get talked about a lot. And, and I think it's because the Islanders kind of have this nameless team. It's similar to Arizona, similar to, I mean, obviously with St. Louis, we all know who's on St. Louis now after the Stanley Cup run, but it reminds me of St. Louis at this time last year. Uh, Pollock is a good defenseman who I think if he played for a Toronto or if he played for the Rangers, if he played for... Uh, a team that gets a lot more attention, I would think he'd get more as well. Uh, Devon Taves. Uh, Taves is a solid defenseman as well. I would think these guys get paid. I would think they, they all stay with the Islanders. Barzell's going to be a fascinating one, though. How much is Barzell worth? The big question with Barzell is this. If you look at it just on the surface, you go, well, his points are good. But if you look on the fact, look to the fact that he's playing on a Barry Trotz team, his numbers are excellent. So that's where things will get interesting. Do you pay him based on, on him as the player, or do you just look at his stats and go, all right, this is what you're worth? Could be an interesting summer for the Islanders. The Rangers, uh, 2020 UFAs. We, of course, know about Chris Kreider, your all-star. And I, I agree that naming Chris Kreider to the all-star game may very well be a ploy by the team in order to drive his value up a little bit. It does showcase him having him at the all-star game. It can't hurt. Uh, people saying, well, Zibanejad should have gone. What if Zibanejad said he didn't want to go? And so that's why they went to Kreider. What if that happened? So, uh, yes, Perfast is also UFA this coming summer. And I think if you're the Rangers, it's tough because I know there's Ranger fans who really like Fast and are like really hardworking and he's a good player. Then there's other GMs that see that as well. And they may pay a decent price for Jesper Fast, who won't break the bank. So if your team's near the cap, you can pick up a guy like Jesper Fast and likely keep your cap together. Uh, so he may have more market value for certain teams than Kreider for that very reason. Uh, restricted free agents. Ryan Strom's an RFA. He will be very thankful to Panarin for whatever he gets this summer. Uh, that being said, the one game Panarin missed, he did get a goal. So I can't just say, well, he, it's all Panarin. Panarin's helped though, right? So he's an RFA this summer. And as a GM, you have to consider that. Consider, okay, he, he got a lot of points this year. It's in a contract year. And how much this has to do with Panarin and do I pay him big money in order to keep him around because that'll keep Panarin happy? That's why I don't envy a GM's job. Uh, Anthony D'Angelo, who has earned a raise, absolutely. And if, if the Rangers don't intend on paying him big money last last summer, of course, he was a holdout. He ended up getting nine hundred and fifty grand. And I know, and I get it, when people say, well, his defensive numbers aren't very good. Right. But the offensive numbers are fantastic. So somebody somewhere, if he were to become available, would definitely pay to get him. Uh, there's a lot of talk about Georgiev right under D'Angelo. And, well, Toronto should be after Georgiev. I'm not going to argue they shouldn't. Georgiev would be an upgrade over Hutchinson. No offense to Hutchinson. I think Georgiev's a good goaltender. Uh, D'Angelo would be huge for Toronto on the blue line. It would help their power play. It would be that, that other... Uh, offensive defenseman it would definitely take pressure off Morgan Riley once he returns and it would help to fill that void until he returns so D'Angelo if they were to make him available in the market right now there would be teams and Toronto comes to mind of course that would would be interested in him as a defenseman that can help drive the offense from the blue line help their special teams power play of course I don't think he plays penalty kill minutes but he is a guy to watch because if the Rangers don't intend on making him a part of their future for the next four or five years, and I think he's earned an extension of three, four, or five years, then, you know, by all means, see what the market is for him. Philadelphia, they are 27, 17, and 6. I didn't mention with the Rangers. They're 23, 21, and 4, 50 points, and four wins and five losses in the month of January. They've played well. They're just, it's not showing in the results. Philadelphia, 27, 17, and 6. They have 60 points. In the month of January, they're 5-4-1. and one. 
So again, they've had a, a decent month. They're 5-4-1, and one, so that's 11 points in 10 games. Columbus has 18 points in 11 games. This is why Philadelphia's pretty cushy spot in the playoffs has become perilous and tenuous. And of course, it doesn't help that Carolina continues to go along at about the same pace they do. So they're just not getting any help. Now, UFAs, Philadelphia's not rife with them. You've got Pitlick, who is a, a third, fourth line guy. He can play third line minutes. Uh, I like I like Pitlick if they make him available to, to shore up somewhere else. You're not going to get a ton back. Uh, same with Braun. Braun uh, probably leaves as a UFA unless he takes a pay cut to remain with the Flyers. And Elliott, who has looked pretty solid, but with Hart out, I, Elliott doesn't go anywhere. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with their goaltending next season. Because Carter Hart clearly is the starter, but what do you do with the backup position? Do you leave it with Elliott, or do you look somewhere else? Uh, RFAs, Haig. So is Haig a good defenseman? There are those in the Philadelphia Flyer fandom that would say no. Uh, Myers, he's been fantastic. I think we can all agree that Philippe Myers has had a really good season. His his defensive numbers are good. His offensive numbers are solid. He's been very, very good. Uh, he's also been deployed by Vino. Vino is very good when it comes to rookies, and I know Canuck fans are going to say, no, he's not. Uh, but he he is. He's, he's able to deploy some rookies very, very well. He did that with Cody Hodgson. So when I look at Myers' numbers, I go, yeah, he's playing well. I'm wondering if there's a Cody Hodgson situation going here where he's making sure he's deployed in situations where he can succeed, which is the measure of a good coach. Uh, Nolan Patrick may play this season. They they hope he'll play this season. They believe he'll play this season. Either way, he'll get a bridge contract. So if his career uh, does resume during this season, and I'm really hoping that it does, because I like Nolan Patrick. I, I don't know that the offense will ever reach what was expected when he was drafted where he was. But Patrick, yeah, I like the player. And so we'll see what happens with, with Patrick uh, this coming summer and, and whether or not the Flyers uh, are, are going to keep him around and for how long and what kind of a deal he gets. Again, I, I figure bridge contract one or two years and hopefully good health for him next season. Maybe good health for him going up through the stretch. If Nolan Patrick were to come back, let's say, over the next three weeks and, and play in some games and help them out, that could bolster their lineup enough to get them in the playoffs ahead of either Carolina or Columbus. Uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, oh, and, sorry, Clefbaum. Uh, or Lindblom, I should say. Clefbaum's in Edmonton. Uh, breaking trades that haven't happened. Um, so, yeah, Lindblom in Philadelphia is... He, he was having a breakout season. And so, again, as a GM, do you look at that breakout season and say, all right, uh, we know you had some health struggles. Let's just do a bridge deal and, and, and we'll see where you're at in a couple of years. I would think that's what they do. I would think that Lindblom's earned that. Now, if he had gone through the full season, if not for this, this situation that's gone going on right now, which he's going to beat and he's going to be back, uh, if not for that, I would think he would get a longer-term deal. But with this... I would think one or two years, and then we'll we'll see a couple years from now where he's at. Pittsburgh. Now I can talk about Pittsburgh. 31, 14, and 5. Uh, 67 points in the month of January. They are 7, 3, and 1. So their record in January, uh, the third best record in, in the month of December, or January, I should say, after Washington and Columbus. But still, very, very good month they've been having. Pittsburgh, their only UFA is Galchenyuk. They've been trying to move Galchenyuk. It's been the rumor. He makes four, or his cap hits, $4.9 million. That's restrictive as to how many teams can pick that up. That's going to be a problem. And what you're going to get is when you're saying, all right, here's Galchenyuk, they're going to go, all right, well, here's our bad contract. To which Pittsburgh would say, that's not what we want to do. So Galchenyuk, they may end up being forced to keep him through the deadline. I could see him just ending up leaving his UFA this summer. Because again, with that cap hit, it'll be interesting to see what happens. They maybe they can retain half of it, and even at half of it, if it's two point five million, it's tough because he's only got five goals this year. Uh, it is a situation where he hasn't done himself favors, and it's weird because he was a thirty goal scorer, and he, he's a pretty good goal scorer, and now it's just gone. It's like the confidence has just left him. Uh, restricted free agents, they have a ton, <clears throat> so. This is where things get kind of tricky, keeping everything under the cap and keeping everybody together. Uh, McCann, who's definitely earned a raise. Uh, McCann's been pretty darn solid for them. Simone, Cahoon, uh, both of those guys, 
raises. Pretty pretty solid. Uh, Marcus Patterson, who they want to get done sooner rather than later. At least that's been the rumor. <coughs> He's been solid. I mean, that that Patterson for Sprong deal looked like it might be favoring Pittsburgh a little bit when it was made. That's not even close now. Uh, Ricola has been a spare. He's been a forward at times. And he's done kind of a little bit of everything. I would think they keep him around. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't want to stay there and they don't want to keep him in goal. Things get really interesting with Pittsburgh. Murray and Jari are both restricted free agents this summer. Matt Murray has to be frustrated with himself and he has to be frustrated with the lack of opportunities he's had to win the net back after he lost it. And if you're Pittsburgh, I get it because winning is all that matters and Jari's done a bunch of that. But what's happened is Jari is now, I don't think it's arguable he's the starter. I think he's just the starter. And for Murray, it's hard for him to argue. I think it's, I think it's a $3.75 million cap hit he has right now. Could he get more than that on the market? Like if he becomes an under, like if he becomes a restricted free agent, is there a team out there that would give him an offer sheet of four million dollars or more, and risk losing a draft pick for him? And and would Pittsburgh even be tempted to match that? They've still got DeSmith in the minors. They, there's plenty of cases around the league over the last couple of years, especially where a team will move on. We'll go. What are they thinking? Getting rid of that coin? And then they just get another one. Uh, Columbus is the ultimate example of that. Yeah, we'll just make Corpus Allo the starter. And many, myself included, go. What are you doing? Corpusello hasn't shown he could be a starter all year. And then, uh, no, pretty good. Oh, Corpusello's hurt. Um, Elvis is going to be a starter? That's not going to work. And then he's pretty good. There are a lot of very good goaltenders. So I think it makes it tougher uh, for, for the Pittsburgh Penguins to hold on to Matt Murray. I think Jari sticks around. And I think whether it's DeSmith or whoever is the backup next year, I, I really think Matt Murray could very well be done as a Penguin by the end of this season. Watch them win the Stanley Cup now and Matt Murray steal the job like like Holtby did a couple years ago in Washington. It can happen. We know Matt Murray can get hot at times. Speaking of Washington, they're the last team on the board. 33-11-5, 71 points. Four points clear of the Pittsburgh Penguins. They've been 6-2 and two in the month of January. So for, for Washington, there's really a holding pattern going here. And the nice news is that their UFA list is remarkably short. You've got Radko Gudis. They decide to hold on to him. It would make some sense. His defensive numbers have been pretty good this year. But if they decide to move on from him, I, I, I don't know. And Do you just let him walk as a UFA or do you try to move him at the deadline? Is there something else that needs to be fixed? Holtby, I am of the mind that Samsonov's emergence as a brilliant young goaltender has made it so that Holtby is expendable. I, I can't see him moving at the deadline. Can you imagine if McClellan moves Holtby at the deadline and then Samsonov gets hurt going into the playoffs, like worst case scenario, right? Or playoffs roll around and Samsonov is overwhelmed in that first round and you don't have Holtby to turn to as the backup. So uh, I, I still think Holtby probably sticks around. And then after, after the playoffs are done for the Capitals, if they're not going to keep Holtby, maybe they try to move his rate somewhere for somebody else to try to sign him. So I don't think Holtby is going to bring back a lot. And I really can't see the Capitals making that move. Really, really can't. Because I see that. I see people saying, well, do you think they'll trade Holtby? Nah, not before the deadline. No chance. Because again, if Samsonov gets hurt, whoops, we traded Holtby. And then, you know, the team you trade him to is like, no backseas. That's not how this works. Uh, restricted free agents, they got Brandon Leipzig. Uh, Leipzig is, is he's a player that I, I like, but can you replace him? You can. Uh, he will likely continue to bounce around the league a little bit. Someday there will be a journeyman video on the career of Brendan Leipzig. And Siegenthaler. Siegenthaler is interesting because he can fill in. He's been the number seven guy at times. And it feels like his career is building up. So we'll see again. It's probably a one or two year bridge deal. So yeah, for the Metro, I, I think the teams to watch the most at the deadline, New Jersey definitely might be interesting to see what Columbus does. I don't think they need to weaponize their cap space because much like Colorado, when I talked about Colorado, you've got Dubois, Corpus Allo, and Merzlikens. You can't be short-sighted and go, okay, we're going to bring in this expensive player because you may very well end up with some cap problems later. I think the teams with cap space are going to look so smart a year from now. Like I'm talking Colorado and Columbus as, as two good examples of that where not spending to the cap not spending the money just because you have it to spend 
may turn out to be the smartest thing you do. All right, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And hey, I will talk to you again soon.